All right, so looking at 17 through 18. Actually, um, let me do something really quick. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at uh, solving. And again, when I use the word solve, the word solve basically means what value of X will make that statement true? What value of X can I put in there that it is everything all equal to zero? We remember factoring. We remembered a few days ago, we learned how to factor. As a matter of fact, last week, we work on this a lot. So I'm gonna separate this into two parentheses. Remember, I used to do the diamond method. I'm just gonna go here. And remember, I'm looking for two numbers that multiplied equals negative 16, but when I add my numbers is equal to positive six. So I'm gonna think of X plus eight and X minus two. Again, my numbers multiplied, right? Eight and the negative two multiplied equals negative 16, but when I add them is equal to positive six. Remember, we talk about factoring not too long ago. So I have all this is equal to zero. So today we're gonna solve by factoring. Now, what we do, what we do now that we factored, in mathematics, if two things multiplied is equal to zero, one of them must be equal to zero. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let each of my parentheses equal to zero, each of my factors. So I have, I'm gonna say X plus eight is equal to zero. Then I'm gonna say X minus two is equal to zero. I am going to have two answers. Now, if x plus 8 is equal to 0, the plus 8, let me move it over as so a minus 8. So that gives me that x is equal to negative 8. That's one of my answers. On the other case, if the minus 2, let me move it over as so a plus 2. So I get that x is equal to 2. That's my other answer. Like I said, you're going to have two answers. So my answer, in my case, I get negative 8, positive 2. That's it. I'm just going to type in my numbers, negative 8, positive 2. There's a space after the comma. Don't forget that. All right, that's not that bad. Let's take a look at number 18. Now, this one, I don't have three terms, so I'm not going to be able to do the diamond method. However, I see that my two terms that I have, the two terms that I have, I can take out an x out of each. So I'm gonna say, all right, I can factor in an X. So I'm gonna do the distributive property backwards. So that's gonna give me X plus one. And I know all of this is equal to zero. I'm gonna let each of my factors equal to zero, right? This X on the outside, let me put it inside of parentheses. I'm gonna let each of my parentheses equal to zero. So I'm gonna say X is equal to zero and X plus one is equal to zero. Each of my parentheses will equal to zero. And I'm going to find out my two answers. The first one, it's already solved for me. X equals zero. Okay, good. I'm done. The second one, my plus one, let me move it over as a minus one. So I get X is equal to negative one. There's my second solution. So I'm just going to type in zero comma negative one. And again, what I mean with solution is what values of X, if I was to plot them in, for my equation, what values of x will give me a true statement, right? Zero squared plus zero is equal to zero, true. Negative one squared plus a negative one is equal to zero, true. Again, I'm looking for what values of x will make this statement true. And we're starting with our, our simple factoring. We even saw question number 19. Remember, we saw this as b squared minus four squared. I talk about the difference of the squares. And remember I said, hmm, if I'm able to write this as a difference of the squares, difference means I have a minus in between and then I have both sides as a squares. My factoring, if I was to factor this, remember I used to get B plus four, B minus four. If this is equal to zero. Now let each of your parentheses is equal to zero. Let me just go here. B plus four is equal to zero. B minus four is equal to zero. My plus four, let me move it over. 
So I get that B is equal to negative four. My negative four, let me move it over. So I get that B is equal to four. When I move a number over, don't forget to switch the sign. So I have the two solutions for B. When I, have, when I type in my answer, you don't have to type in B equals, just type in your numbers, negative four, positive four. Now, which of the two you type in first, it doesn't matter, right? There's two answers. Which one do you type in first? Again, it doesn't matter. For your homework, it allows me to submit two possible answers. So I submitted, what if you type in the negative four first? Mark it correct. And then I also told the program, what if you type in the positive four first? So the order in the homework, you're gonna notice it doesn't matter. On the quiz itself, it allows me to only type in one correct way. So I, the way I did it was like, what if you type in the negative four first? But if you do it the other way, you know, type in the positive four first, technically you're correct. The, the quiz will mark you incorrect when it grades automatically, but I will go back later and I'll fix it. Again, on the, the two answers, it doesn't matter which one you type in first. In the homework, you'll see that it doesn't matter, but on the quiz, if it marks it wrong, because you type it in the opposite of way of how I typed it, I'll go back later and fix it. Okay, so now looking at question number 20. Remember my diamond method. When my first number is equal to one, I'm looking for two numbers that multiplied it's equal to 20, negative 20, but when I add them it's equal to one, because there's a one in front of the X, I'm gonna think of X plus five, X minus four, right? Plus five minus four, that's multiplied equals negative 20, added is equal to one, right? We did factoring last week, so we should be good at it. I did my two factors. I'm going to let each of my parentheses equal to zero. I'm going to say, well, if x plus five is equal to zero, I'm also going to try x minus four is equal to zero. My plus five, let me move it over. So I get that x is equal to negative five. My minus four, let me move it over. So I get that x is equal to four. Again, when we move it over, we switch the signs. So my answer are negative five in positive four. If you plot in, if you substitute X with any of these two values, you get a true statement. If you substitute it with anything else, you get a false statement. So look, let's take a look at number 21. When my first number is a one, it's kind of simple. Remember, I'm just looking for two numbers that multiplied is equal to negative five, but when I add them, it's equal to negative four. Well, I might count my, let me plug my, my computer in. Okay. So again, I'm looking for two numbers that multiplied is equal to negative five multiplied is equal to this last number, but when I add my numbers, it's equal to negative four. So I'm gonna think of V minus five and V plus one, All right? Negative five plus one is negative four. Negative five times one is negative five. So let each of my factors equal to zero. So I'm gonna say, all right, if V minus five is equal to zero, let me try V plus one equal to zero. The minus five, let me move it over as a plus five. So I get V is equal to five. My plus one, let me move it over. So I get V is equal to negative one. So my answers are five and negative one. Take a look at number 22. Two numbers that when I multiply them is 28, but when I add them is negative 11. So let me think of P minus four and P minus seven, All right? Negative four minus seven is negative 11. Negative four times a negative seven is positive 28. Let each of your parentheses equal to zero. P minus four is equal to zero. P minus seven is equal to zero. My minus four, let me move it over. 
Don't forget to switch the sign. So I get P is equal to four. The minus seven, let me move it over. Don't forget to switch the sign. We get the P is equal to seven. So my solution will be four and seven. Except you don't have to type in P equals just my, my numbers. Now, the interesting part is, what if my first number is not a one? Hmm. Okay, so now I remember my diamond method. I'm looking for two numbers that multiplied equals negative 70, but when I add them, it's equal to negative three. The negative 70, because I multiplied my first and my last number. So multiplied equals negative 70, but when I add my numbers, is a negative three. I'm gonna think of negative 10 and a positive seven. Because my first number is not a one, I don't go straight to parentheses. Instead, I'm gonna split the middle term. My negative three M, I'm gonna split it as a negative 10 and a positive seven. So let me rewrite this as two M squared minus 10 M plus 7m minus 35, it's equal to zero. Because my first number is not a one, I split the middle term. I look at my first two terms. I can divide each by two and I can take an m out. I'm gonna do the distributive property backwards. So that gives me one m minus five, then I look at the last two terms. I can divide each by seven, and that's gonna give me one M minus five. So if I was to factor this, if I was just looking at the factors, one of my factors is M minus five, the parentheses that matches. The other factor is two M plus seven. Now here, I'm not asking you to factor, I'm asking you to solve. So what I'm gonna do with each of my factors, in this case, m minus five, my first factor, let me let it equal to zero. My second factor, two m plus seven, I'm gonna let it equal to zero. Let each of my parentheses equal to zero. So the minus five, let me move it over as a plus five. So I get m is equal to five. On my other case, the plus seven, let me move it over as a minus seven. So I get that two M is equal to negative seven. When I divide both sides by two, I get that M is equal to negative seven over two. Leave it as a fraction, negative seven over two. When I type it in, you will only type in the five and the negative seven over two. So let me do it in red. If, I, if this was my homework, I will type in five comma negative seven over two. All right, so let's take a look at number 24 now. I want to do my diamond method. I'm looking at two numbers that multiplied is equal to negative 210. But when I add them, it's equal to negative 29. I know multiplied is negative, so the signs are different. Let's see. My factors are 1 and 210. Yeah, that one doesn't work. 210 divided by 2. Mm, I get 3 and 70. Nah, that one doesn't work. I'm looking for six and 35. Okay, that will do it. Six and 35, positive six, negative 35. So I'm gonna split my middle term. 10 P squared plus six P minus 35 P minus 21 is equal to zero. Looking at the first two terms only, I can divide each by two and take a P out. So it's gonna give me five P plus three. 
Looking at the last two terms, I can divide each by a negative seven. And that's gonna give me five P plus three. My factors are five P plus three and two P minus seven. Now that I'm solving, let each of my factors equal to zero. So I'm gonna say let 5p plus three equal to zero and let 2p minus seven equal to zero. Looking at the first one, 5p plus three equal to zero. The plus three, let me move it over as a minus three. So I get that 5p is equal to negative three. To get the p by itself, let me divide both sides by five and I'm gonna get P is equal to negative three over five. I'm looking at the other one, my minus seven, let me move it over as a plus seven. So I get that two P is equal to seven. Once I divide both sides by two, I'm gonna get that P is seven over two. When you type in your answer, only type in the negative three five a little comma, and then the seven over two. Again, you don't have to type in P equals, just the numbers. The numbers can be fractions, so it's fine. Now let's do another one. Looking at number 25, I'm looking, I'm gonna do my diamond method. I'm looking for two numbers that when I add them is equal to negative 52. But when I multiply them, I get negative 224. My signs are different. And I think, all right, one times 224, uh, yeah, that doesn't work. Two times 212, two times 112, that one doesn't work. Three is not a factor. Four and 56, yep, yeah, that will do it, four and 56. So positive four, negative 56. So I'm gonna split my middle term. Let me go seven a squared plus four a minus 56 a minus 32, it's equal to zero. Looking at the first two terms, I can only factor it on an A. Remember, I'm doing the distributive property backwards. So that gives me in the inside 7A plus 4. Nothing I can do with those numbers. Looking at the last two numbers, I can divide each by a negative 8. And that's going to give me 7A plus 4. So my factors, one of them is 7A plus 4. And the other one is A minus eight. Now, let me move on to the next step. I'm gonna change it to red so we don't get confused. Let each of your parentheses equal to zero. So I'm gonna go seven A plus four equal to zero. And then I'm also gonna do A minus eight is equal to zero. The first one, the plus four, let me move it over as a minus four. So I have that seven A is equal to negative four. Once I divide both sides by seven, I'm gonna get that A is equal to negative four over seven. Leave it as a fraction. For my other solution, the minus eight, let me move it over as a plus eight. So I get that A is equal to eight. You can see my two solutions, negative four over seven and eight. All right, when the first number is not a one, oh, a little more challenging. Let's take a look at number 26. I'm thinking of my diamond method. I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply them is equal to negative 24, but when I add them is equal to five. So I'm gonna think negative eight, positive three. So that's just for me to split my middle term. 
So I have 2n squared minus, actually plus 8 minus 3. So plus 8n minus 3n minus 12. Remember, I just split my 5n as 8 minus 3. Looking at my first two terms, I can divide each by 2. And I can also remove an n. So that left that leaves me with n plus four. Looking at the last two, I can divide each by a negative three, and that leaves me with n plus four. So if I was just to factor, one of my factors is n plus four, right? The parentheses that matches. My other factor is two n minus three what came out outside of the parentheses. Now for me to solve, I'm gonna go n plus four is equal to zero, two n minus three is equal to zero. The first one, my plus four, let me move it over as a minus four. So I get n is equal to negative four. And the second one, my minus three, let me move it over as a plus three. So that gives me that 2n is equal to 3. Once I divide both sides by 2, I'm going to get that n is equal to 3 over 2. You see my two solutions. All right. I'm not quite done yet. I still have a few more questions to go. So reminder, we started with what if my first number was a 1? We're able to factor that each of my factors equal to zero. Then we'll say, well, what if my numbers don't start with the one? All right, we gotta split the middle term. We gotta factor and let each of the factors equal to zero. Now the question here, the one we're gonna move on is, what if one of my sides is not equal to zero? Well, move everything, move everything to the left. So what I'm gonna do, First of all, my 5m squared, let me move it to the left as a minus 5m squared. My negative 7m, let me move it over as a positive 7m. I notice I can combine like terms. So that's going to give me 1m squared plus 7m minus 8 is equal to 0. Move everything to the left. That way, the right side is equal to 0 and then factor the way we know. My first number is a one, so I'm gonna go straight to parentheses. I'm thinking for two numbers that when I add is seven, but when I multiply is negative eight. So I'm gonna think of m plus eight, m minus one. Now for me to solve, I'm just gonna go m plus eight is equal to zero, m minus one is equal to zero because my parentheses were equal to zero. Now at, with my plus eight, let me move it over as a minus eight. So I get that m is equal to negative eight. My minus one, let me move it over as a plus one. So I get m is equal to one. And you see my two solutions, negative eight, positive one. When you write them down, make sure you put a comma in between them and you put a space after the comma. So negative eight, comma, space, one. All right, take a look at number 28. My minus three X, I'm gonna move it to this other side as a plus eight X. So that's gonna give me X squared plus 13 X is equal to zero. When there's two terms, I could be looking probably at the difference of the squares, or I could be looking at other cases. In this case, I'm just gonna do distributive property backwards. I notice that they both have an X, so I'm gonna factor out an X, and it's gonna give me X plus 13 is equal to zero. My X on the outside, let me do put it inside parentheses. So I'm gonna solve each of my parentheses. So I'm gonna say, all right, I'm gonna say X is equal to zero. Each of my parentheses, I'm gonna let them equal to zero. And then I'm also gonna say X plus 13 
is equal to zero. I already have my first solution, x equals zero. For the other one, my plus 13, let me move it over as a minus 13. So I get x equals negative 13. Again, I move everything to the left. Combine like terms, if anything. Oh, I made a mistake on this one. Let me erase this. My minus 3x, I moved it as a 8. Actually, I was supposed to move that as a plus 3x. I was getting ahead of myself. That will give me x squared plus 8x is equal to 0. Factor it out an x. So I get x plus 8 is equal to 0. Now, when I'm going to solve, I'm going to say x is equal to 0 and x plus 8 is equal to 0. Cool. I already have my first solution. My plus 8, let me move it over. So I get that x is equal to negative 8. Good. That gives me the second solution. So again, move everything to the right. Switch the signs, obviously. Combine like terms and then, and then factor it the way we know how to factor. Let's take a look at number 29. By the way, I'm working up until number 34 today. Let's take a look at number 29. I'm going to move the minus 6n. I'm going to move it as a plus 6n. I'm trying to combine like terms. My minus 7n squared, let me move it over as a plus 7n squared. So it's going to give me 1n squared minus 2n minus 3. It's equal to 0. Again, combine your like terms. My first number is a 1. Great. I can go straight to parentheses. Two numbers that multiplied equals negative three, but when I add them, it's equal to negative two. I'm gonna think n minus three, n plus one. Right, negative three plus one is negative two. Negative three times a positive one is negative three. So that works for me to solve for this. Let each of my parentheses equal to zero. So I have n minus 3 equal to 0. Then I also have n plus 1 equal to 0. My minus 3, let me move it over as a plus 3. So I get n is equal to 3. Good. I got my first solution. My plus 1, let me move it over. So I get n is equal to negative 1. Good. Got my second solution. Again, move everything to the left. Combine your like terms and then factor the way we know. Let's take a look at one more. My five, let me move it over as a minus five. My eight r squared, let me move it over as a minus eight r squared. So that's gonna give me that one r squared minus nine is equal to zero. I'm looking at that as r squared minus three squared, the difference of the squares. So in fact, my nine, let me write that as three squared. I remember the difference of the squares. I'm going to factor this as r plus three, r minus three. This is equal to zero. Now to solve for this, I'm going to say r plus three is equal to zero. And then r minus three is equal to zero. My plus three, let me move it over. So R is equal to negative three. My minus three, let me move it over. So I get R is equal to positive three. You see my two solutions. You don't have to type in R equals, just negative three and three, but make sure you put a comma in between them in the space after the comma. So you will type in negative three comma space three. All right, let's take a look at a couple of a few more. My minus four. I'm going to move it as a plus four. I'm trying to combine like terms. I put it with the 10. My minus seven N. Let me bring it over with the plus seven N. So that gives me six N squared minus 35 N minus six is equal to zero. Move everything to the left and it's equal to zero. My first number is not a one. So I'm going to do my super diamond here. I'm looking for two numbers 
And when I multiply it is equal to negative 36, but when I add is equal to negative 35. So I'm gonna think of negative 36 and a positive one. And that's just for me to split my middle term. So it gives me six n squared minus 36 n plus one n minus six is equal to zero. When I look at my first two terms, I can divide each by six and n. So that gives me n minus six. Looking at the last two terms, the only way I can divide them is by a positive one. And that gives me n minus six. So my factors are gonna be n minus six and six n plus one. Right, to solve for this, let each of my factors, each of my parentheses equal to zero. So I get n minus six is equal to zero. I get six n plus one equal to zero. My minus six, let me move it over. So I get n equals six, that's good. My plus one, let me move it over. So I get six n equals negative one. Once I divide everything by six, I get n equals negative one over six. You see my two solutions. I'm gonna stop at 34, so we're almost there. Let's take a look at number 32. My eight, let me move it over as a minus eight. So it's gonna give me seven a squared plus 46a minus 21 is equal to zero. I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply them, or when I multiply them, equals negative 147. But when I add them, it's equal to 46. Multiplied, I know, is different signs. So I'm starting to think, all right. Mm, 49 and 3, yep, that will do it. Positive 49, negative 3. So I'm going to split my middle term. So I'm going to get this as 7a squared plus 49a minus 3a minus 21 equal to 0. Looking at my first two terms, I can divide each by 7a. Just looking at the first two terms, that gives me a plus 7. Looking at the last two terms, I can divide each by a negative three. That's gonna give me a plus seven. When I factor this, one of my factors is a plus seven, which is the repeating parentheses. The other factor is seven a minus three, which is what I was able to factor out. Now to solve for this, I'm gonna go a plus seven equal to zero. And then I'm gonna do 7a minus three equal to zero. My plus seven, let me move it over. So I get a equals negative seven. My minus three, let me move it over as a plus three. So I get 7a is equal to three. Once I divide both sides by seven, I get a is equal to three over seven. Oh, just two more guys, just two more. I'm going to say, all right, I want the right side equal to zero. So the four, let me move it over as a minus four. So it gives me five n squared minus 12 n plus four, it's equal to zero. So I'm looking at my diamond method and I'm thinking, all right, two numbers that when I multiply it equals 20, when I add them, it's equal to negative 12. So let me go. Multiply it equals 20, add it equals negative 12. Let's see, two times 10, negative two, negative 10. So I'm gonna split this as five n squared minus two n minus 10 n plus four. Looking at the first two terms only, 
I'm just going to be able to factor out an n. And that's going to give me 5n minus 2. Looking at the last two terms, let me divide each by a negative 2. And it's going to give me 5n minus 2. My factors, one of them is 5n minus 2. And the other one is n minus 2. All right. So now for solving, I'm going to let 5n minus 2 equal to 0. And then I'm also going to say n minus 2 equal to 0. And minus 2, let me move it over as so a positive 2. So 5n equals 2. Once I divide both sides by 5, I get n equals 2 over 5. On the other case, my minus 2, let me move it over as so a positive 2. So again, n equals positive 2. You see my two solutions, 2 over 5 and 2. Oof, one more question. The minus 5k squared, let me move it over as a plus 5k squared. I'm trying to match it with like terms. My minus 4k, let me move it over as a plus 4k. So that's going to give me 21k squared minus 13k plus 2 equals to 0. I think of my dime. Two numbers that when I multiplied equals 42, but when I add equals negative 13. And I think negative 6, negative 7. That's just for me to split my middle term. So I'm going to get 21k squared minus 6k minus 7k plus 2 equals to 0. So now factor. Looking at the first two terms, just the first two, I can divide each by 3 and take out a k. So I'm going to divide each by 3k. And that's going to give me 7k minus 2. Looking at the last two terms, let me factor the negative 1 sign. So it's going to give me 7k minus 2. So my factors are 7k minus 2 and 3k minus 1. Now let me solve this. Last part. Each of your parentheses is equal to zero. So each of your parentheses, I'm going to go 7k minus 2 equal to zero. And then I'm also going to do 3k minus 1 equal to zero. My minus 2, I'm going to move it over as a positive 2. So I'm going to give me 7k is equal to positive 2. Once I divide both sides by 7, I get k is equal to 2 over 7. Leave it as a fraction. My other case, my minus 1, let me move it over as a positive 1. So that gives me 3k is equal to positive 1. Once I divide both sides by 3, I'm going to get k is equal to 1 over 3. And again, the way I type my, my solutions would be 2 over 7, comma, 1 over 3. Let me zoom out. You guys can take a screenshot 